everybody, this is Pastor Thomas Buher, and uh, I'm coming to you through Reformation International College and Theological Seminary. I wanted to kind of share with you um, some of our books that we use in our course of studies for our Master of Divinity program. Uh, some of the first courses you will take, I believe the very first one, is on uh, Biblical Theology and the Covenants. And then the second one is a systematic theology. And so I have two books for that here. Uh, our biblical theology book that we use is Christ of the Covenants by O. Palmer Robertson. And uh, this is a classic. Uh, Robertson wrote this, uh, I think, 40, yeah, 1980, so over 40 years ago. And uh, I actually read this at, I believe, the Bible college I attended another seminary I attended, and then Ritz, Reformation International Theological Seminary as well. So it is a um, kind of the standard uh, still in many seminaries for uh, teaching uh, the covenants from Scripture from a Reformed and Presbyterian perspective. And then uh, our systematic theology, we have a lot of courses on systematic theology. The first one you begin with, you simply read through Herman Bavinck's Our Reasonable Faith, which is a pretty um, substantial summary of his four-volume um, dogmatics. Um, he, this, this summary is 550 pages long, over 550 pages. And for each book that you read and each lecture that you listen to that's um, recorded, you'll get what are called study guides. And study guides um, basically are questions based on each chapter of what you read. Now, this is the key here, so the answers are also supplied. Um, but you have questions, and then uh, you put in the answers. Then our dean of studies will grade them, uh, send them back to you through email graded, and so on and so forth. And that's, that's the basic pattern of how our courses um, are conducted. Uh, you do it self-paced uh, at your own time. Um, chapter by chapter, lecture by lecture, course by course. So you're not taking a bunch of courses at one time. You're able to focus on one course uh, from start to finish at your own pace. Uh, send in the study guides one by one as you go. They're returned to you graded um, as our Dean of Studies is able to get to them, which is pretty quickly. And so you get uh, instant feedback, really. Um, in, in my experience, in both Bible college and at uh, other uh, another seminary, typically the the standard model where you're in person, you're listening to lectures live, and so on. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of advantages by being physically at uh, an institution of learning uh, with fellow classmates, and so on. Um, there's trade-offs, but one thing that's nice about doing it self-paced and getting feedback as you go is that you you do get real feedback. Uh, it's not, um, it's not like you're not having interaction with, um, our Dean of Studies who handles the grading of these things. You do get interaction, uh, throughout the course. And so this isn't a sort of do it yourself, uh, program. Uh, there is oversight, there is grading and so on. And that helps sort of facilitate or make up for the lack of being, uh, live, in person, uh, in a classroom with the professor. Uh, you're getting feedback as you go. And then as you complete these study guides, these questions here, uh, then uh, eventually you'll have maybe a midterm, midterm exam, a final exam. Uh, some, a few courses have papers in them, though most of them do not. Um, and the midterms and finals are based on the study guides. So as you get feedback, you know you're learning um, you're getting correction right away if you missed an answer. And you know, based on that, what you need to study, hence it's called a study guide, uh, for the exams. Uh, now, most seminaries and college, Bible colleges that I know of, in fact, uh, I don't know any, that provide um, questions based on your reading and your lectures that you answer, and then you get uh, quick turnaround feedback on them, get them graded, and so on. Um, usually, you have to go in... Um, listen, take notes, uh, highlight your reading, and of course you should still <laughs> do that as well uh, in our program too, 
but I think that's one of the real benefits and unique things about our program is that you get a lot of questions that are helping you um, read through, digest, comprehend, and think about what you're reading and what you're listening to. And then you're required to answer um, answer them. So for example, this is just something I had printed out because I was actually uh, using this uh, where I pastor in officer training, uh, Herman Bodding's Our Reasonable Faith, uh, when I was training an elder and a deacon. And um, with permission, of course, we were able to use it and uh, use the question and answers from the seminary. Um, so just for example, this is chapter 13 from Our Reasonable Faith by Bob Inc. And by the way, um, this has been released more recently by, um, I don't remember the publisher now, but it's called The Wonderful Works of God. If you see that by Herman Bob Inc., it's, it's essentially the same book, just it looks nicer. It's more formatted. Um, either one will do those is the same content. So just from chapter 13, sin and death, the first study guide question on chapter 13 is give a brief explanation of what Bob Inc. says is the declaration in James that God tempts no man, right? So you read the chapter, Bob Inc. talks about that. Now you have to answer that question. And from that chapter, there are 10 questions. Um, chapter 14 uh, on the covenant of grace. There's another 10 questions, and then some of these have 15, some of these have 20 questions per chapter. Um, so you're getting a lot of um, instant feedback, in other words. Uh, you're not going more than one chapter without having to, to submit something and uh, receive instruction based on your answers. So the answer they give to uh, this question here about James, where it says that God tempts no man, the answer, something would be like this. This is not that God does not try try man or put him to the proof or test him. But when someone fails that test, he's inclined to charge God with the guilt of the fall and that God tempted him. That is, tried him with the intention of making him fall or putting him to a test in which he must necessarily fail. Right? God uh, may test us, but he, he does not tempt us. And okay, that's the distinction that's made there. Um, number two, what is the commonly presented solution to the question of why the evil of sin and of misery? The common solution is that sin does not live in man, nor come out of him, but attaches itself to him from without, that by nature man is good and his heart is uncorrupted. Right? That's often how um, well, those of poor theology uh, may present the problem of uh, of evil, why there's sin and misery, that basically people are victims rather than sinners. Um, sin comes from the outside and sort of attacks us rather than we being the source and engine of sin from the fall in Adam and Adam's fall sinned all and so on. So you get questions like that uh, through each chapter, through each lecture. And then in turn, as you get feedback on that, you then have time to study and prepare for a midterm or final exam. And you're going to have some of the most important questions from your study guides. You don't know which one, so you have to really study everything that you've answered. Um, but you will know um, if you study everything and know what you've been working on well, um, what will be on the exams. And so this really is a streamlined way to study. And it takes out guesswork, which I've experienced in Bible college and seminary as well, where you've, you're giving so, given so much information and you have no idea um, what is or is it going to be expected of you on on an exam? There's tons of stuff you have to study here, but at least you have um, knowledge of what it is you're going to need to study. So that's basically our format. And you know, once you go beyond biblical and th systematic theology, we have four other very meaty courses on systematic theology, going through Burkhoff's systematic theology and. I think over 250 or something lectures from Carl Bogue on the Westminster Confession of Faith. And so you'll be studying the Westminster Confession in great detail with Reverend Carl Bogue uh, from some recorded lectures that he has. Uh, and at the same time, reading chunks of Burkhoff and ultimately finishing the entire systematic theology of Burkhoff. So you'll get a lot between Bob Inc. and Burkhoff and Bogue, the three B's <laughs> in your systematic theology uh, our lectures for covenant theology are outstanding. They're very helpful to me by Joe Moorcraft. Uh, and as I said, you'll be reading uh, Christ of the Covenants for O. Palmer Robertson. So our biblical theology 
and systematic theology programs um, of study in, on the MDiv for the MDiv is very strong uh, and thorough. And then, of course, you get your languages and church history and apologetics and everything else that goes in a regular MDiv program. So if you're interested uh, in studying with us, please uh, email me, uh, registrar at reformation.edu. You can respond in the comment box on Facebook here to this video. Um, yeah, whatever. You can uh, ask questions and uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks. God bless.